I need to have my calculator up. Please make sure that you complete that register and you have your calculators ready because today's session I'm going to show you how to use your calculators. Uh, what type of calculators do you have? I have a Casio, but it's must be an old one. It's not as fancy as yours. It can't do the fractions. Ah, okay. Uh, but I don't think you will be required to do a lot of calculation in your studies. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to show you in case they ask you to do some calculation so that then you know how to do certain calculations. OK, so today's session we're going to be looking at how we do um, hypothesis testing for the correlation. Uh, and a correlation is where we look at if two numerical val uh, variables are related or are correlated to one another. Uh, this is our second last session. Um, our final session will be on the 27th of September and then we would have covered everything you need in terms of um, in terms of statistical skills that you required in order to go through your module with ease. And then we will see if we can set up an exam preparation session for us to go through at least one exam paper and see how to answer certain questions from there based on everything that we would have learned uh, in preparation for you to go write the exam. <clears throat> and then also um, I will be sharing with people who have been attending the sessions we will share the uh, the link to um, a one on one session if you want to book such. Uh, there are times so because I've got limited time, um, I can only offer support to those who have been part participating week in, week out in, within the session. So we, we will prioritize them first. Um, so look out for that email so they will look at the, the register and then send out the, uh, the link to those people to say if you still want some support or um, some engagement with me uh, one on one, uh, this is the process that you need to follow. So it's not going to be sent out to everyone. Possibly it will be sent to those who have been attending the sessions so that we can support you even further. Okay, so. Are there any questions before we start with today's session? Have I started the recording? I can't even remember now. Yes, it says recording has started. Ah, okay. Yes. Do you have any question? Nope. The other person just left, so it's only me and you. <laughs> yeah, so it's fine. So like I said, we're going to be looking at correlation. Um, and like I said, also uh, in your module, you're not expected as well to do a lot of calculation, but I'm just going to show you how to do some calculation for other measures. But you will be expected to know how to interpret um, your correlation um, values as well. So. In order for us to go through this, you need to know there are formulas that we're going to go through and also you require a calculator because sometimes you will need to do some calculations. So when we talk about uh, a correlation, because we're talking about the relationship between two numerical values and to visualize them, we always put them on a scatter plot. And a scatter plot shows you a relationship between your independent variable and your dependent variable. And remember always 
everything that sits on your x axis will be your independent variable because it's your input variable and anything that sits on the y axis will be your dependent variable which will be your output variable which is something that we want to uh, predict or so <clears throat> in terms of correlation it is used to measure uh, the strength and the direction, not only the strength, but also the direction of the relationship between the two variables. And sometimes we call this um, a relationship. We want to check if it is a linear relationship. Um, so when we talk about the strength, we talk about um, whether uh, is it a strong, a weak, a moderate or no relationships type of um, the strength. And when we talk about direction, we're talking about whether the value that you will be calculating will be negative or positive. Or when you look at the scatter plot, does it show that it is declining or is it going up? What we mean by declining, it means when something goes up, the other thing goes down. That it means it's declining when it's in, um, uh, ascending. We say when something goes up, the other thing also goes up. So th that is what we're going to monitor and look at in terms of correlation. So if I have um, my independent variable X, which has the score of 13551, and I have my dependent variable, which has the score of 4, 10, 12, and 13, I can take those two variables and plot them onto my scatter plot. Remember, on the x-axis, we plot the independent variable, and on the y-axis, we plot the dependent variable. So in terms of a scatter plot, uh, you can see that one corresponds with four, so it, this will create a dot. So where I have my independent variable of one, I will have my dependent variable of four. And that will be the dot that you place. And three, three and six, you go and look at three and six, that will be the variable. And five and 10, go to five, and you go to 10 where they meet. That is the variable and 5 and 12, you go to 5, you go to 12, and that will be the variable. And 1 and 13, where it's 1, and there is the variable. Now, after plotting this uh, dot on this scatter plot, we can clearly see that this is a value that is away from the rest of the values, and that is what we call an outlier. You can look at what an outlier is, it's an extreme value. It's a value that is far apart from the rest of the values. But when you look at the other values, if we ignore the one that is far apart, we look at the other values, you can see that when my X values are increasing, my Y values are also increasing. And that is what we're going to be talking about in terms of the, co uh, the correlation. And looking at this, we will say this is a positive correlation because my X value and my Y value are both increasing at the same time. Okay, so there are measures that you can calculate to measure this relationship. Sorry, to measure this relationship, we can calculate it by using what we call a coefficient of correlation, which is also called R which is a measure that will tell you how well your linear equation describes the relationship between the two variables that you are measuring. So when we talk about the linear equation, when we do the regression, you will understand where this linear regression comes in. But R will tell us how well the two variables relate to one another. So for example, how do we calculate the coefficient of correlation? So you will be given the X and Y value, your independent and dependent. There is a formula that you need to calculate. And on that formula, we always calculate, so this has the bar. These are some of the values that you need to be able to know how to calculate them. So for example, the first value, which 
um, these are the values that you are given. X and Y are the values that you will be given. And if you add all these values for X, you will get 15. When you add all the values of Y, you will get 45. And these values, when you add them, the total, we call them the summation. So for example, the summation of X will be equals to 15. The summation of Y will be equals to 45. That is what the total is. So total means summation, adding up. Summation means adding up. So now when you have the summation of all the values, you are able to calculate what we call the mean. So if I need to calculate the mean of X, which is X bar, we know that it is the summation of X divided by how many they are. And here we see that uh, the summation of X is 15. And how many there are? There are one, two, three, four, five. There are five. And when we take 15 divided by five, you will get three. Hence, I have the mean of three. The same thing, 45 divided by, um, divided by five will give you the mean of y, which is 45 divided by five, which will be equals to nine because it's the sum of y values divided by how many there are. So if you have your mean and you have your summation, uh, you should be able to also calculate other measures. So for example, like the second block or the third block it, uh, column, it says X observation minus the mean. So what it means, it says for every value of Y, we're going to subtract uh, the mean. So one minus three equals to minus two. 3 minus 3 is 0, 5 minus 3 is 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, 1 minus 3, it will be minus 2. And if I add all of them, I will get 0 because the sum of all this, they will cancel out. Minus 2 plus 0 plus 2 will be 0, plus 2 will be 2, minus 2 will be 0. The second, the fourth one or the fourth column, it says y minus the mean of y. Um, hence, I put the, the x bar and the y bar. I forgot to put the bar on there. Or oh, the line is very small, but there is a bar there. So we do the same. We go to the mean, uh, your y observation. So 4 minus 9 is minus 4. 6 minus 9 is minus 3. 10 minus 9 is 1. 12 minus 9 is 3. 13 minus 4 is 9. And if you add all of them, you will see that you will get 0. This fifth column, it says x multiplied by y. So x multiplied by 1, it means we're multiplying our x value with our y value. 1 multiplied by 4 is 4. 3 multiplied by 6 is 18. 5 multiplied by 10 is 50. 5 multiplied by 12 is 60, 1 multiplied by 13 is 13. And all of them, you get 145. And we do the same, the next one, it's x squared. So therefore it means this value of x multiplied by itself twice. One times one is one. Three times three is nine. Five times five is 25. One times one, we already made that it's one. The same will, up, um, will Will, will be the same for y squared. 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, is 16. 6 times 6 is 36. 10 times 10 is 100. 12 times 12 is 144. And 13 times 13 is 169. Adding all of them, you will get 465. So once you have built all the columns that you need, you can then go and calculate what we call the coefficient of correlation which is your R, which is your Pearson R coefficient of correlation. Remember our table that we have calculated some of the values. So now we can take the summation because you can see there is the summation of X and Y. Remember the total is your summation. So N is how many they are. So we have established that there are only five of them. So we can just substitute five onto N the summation of X and Y, we take the sum, the total of X and Y, it's 145. We're going to substitute it into that formula. The summation of X times the summation of Y, 
it will be the summation of X will be 15. The summation of Y is 45. The summation of X squared. Now, this summation of X and the summation of X squared are different. The summation of X squared, it is 61. The summation of X, remember it's 15. The same, the summation of Y squared will be 465. So we just substitute into the formula and calculate your R. So in your exam, sometimes they will just give you the value of R is equals to 0, 0,32 and ask you to interpret that value. This is how you calculate the value, but you might be asked to interpret what does this value of 0, 0,32 mean? And in terms of that, <clears throat> based on the scatter plot, you should be able to see or determine whether your correlation coefficient will be a positive or will be negative. For example, if you look at this scatter plot, all the dots are lined up. It shows clearly shows from the scatter plot that when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are increasing. And because the line, the, the dots are in a straight line, usually the R for this type of a visualization or for this kind of a scatter plot, there will be R will be equals to one. And when R is equals to one, we say in terms of the direction, because R is equals to one is positive, we say it is a positive relationship and when it is equals to one, we say it is a perfect relationship because everything lines up. But when the dots are scattered everywhere, where you are unable to format or see a uh, uh, see a, a pattern arise, because clearly on these dots, you cannot say when X is increasing, Y is also increasing. It, it's not the same case. However, in terms of the coefficient of correlation, when you calculate it and you get the coefficient of correlation of 0 0.18, we say this is a weak positive relationship because in terms of the direction, it is positive. So let's look at another example. If the dots look like this and R, when you calculate it and get R of 0 0.85, we say this is a strong, positive relationship and when it looks like this where r the dots are you can see that when x is increasing but y values are decreasing we and when you calculate r you get minus 0 0.92 you can also state that there is a strong negative relationship but these are not how you only interpret the data so let's assume that they didn't give you the graph they just give you the R. So you should be able, oh sorry, you should be able to use the R value to say whether it is a perfect positive or negative relationship, or it is a weak relationship, or it is a positive or negative strong relationship, or there is no relationship. So when R comes closer to one, we always also state that the two variables are closely related or are more related to one another. At some point, you should be able to also calculate what we call R squared, which is an important statistic that indicate the variation, the total variation in your Y value or your dependent value that is explained by the variation in your X value, which is your independent variable. Okay. So, how do we interpret the values? Um, if your R, if your R is equals to one, we say it is a perfect, or if it's exactly equals to negative one, we say it's perfect negative relationship. If it's minus 0 0.7, we say it is a strong negative relationship. If it's minus 0 0.5, we say it is a moderate negative relationship. If it is minus 0 0.30, we say it is a weak relationship. And if it is zero, we say there is no relationship. 
the same will happen when it is positive because the only thing that will change will just be the, uh, the direction which will state positive. And this is how you will interpret your R. So you just need to know how to do that. Then, if we go into test the hypothesis, then the way we state our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, we use our coefficient of correlation, but for the population, which is pi, which will phi, not pi, but phi, 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 h, i, phi. So to state your null hypothesis, you will always say your phi is equals to zero, which is your population coefficient of correlation is equals to zero. Your alternative will state that it's not equals to zero. So we always state with not equals to. So our null hypothesis will state that there is no correlation between X and Y because there is no your your correlation is equals to zero. Your alternative will state that there is a correlation between your X and Y. Um, you will um, need to be able to calculate your test statistic. So because your P will always be zero, so your R is something that you would have been calculated or it will be given to you. For example, like the first one that we did, we know that our R was equals to 0, 0,32. So you just use that R into the formula because you have your R, your R squared. I will just take 0, 0.32 squared and your n, it will be how many they are. There were five values. So your n was equals to five and you can calculate your test statistic. You will need your, uh, you will need your degrees of freedom uh, to go to find your, uh, to go find your critical value. So if you are, uh, if your uh, R squared is positive, your coefficient of correlation is positive and V1 is greater than zero. And also you will need to find it where your R is negative, the square root of R squared, if V1 is less than zero. So it will be negative if V1 is negative, is negative, it's, it takes any value that is negative. Um, it will be positive if B1 it is greater than. Okay, so how do we then test the correlation? So for example, is there an evidence of linear relationship between X and Y at 5% level of significance? We know how to state the null hypothesis. Phi is equals to zero, no correlation. Alternative will state that there is a correlation. Statement number two, state whatever you need, uh, you are given. Our alpha value is 0, 0,05. Our degrees of freedom, let's assume that they have given us previously, which was five minus, uh, we said it is five, right? Yes, it was five. So our degrees of freedom is n minus one, which is five, oh, sorry, n minus two, which is five minus two, which is equals to three. And we go and calculate our test statistic. R is 0, 0,32, P is zero, because we take it from the null hypothesis, it's equals to zero. It's always um, hypothesized to zero. And the square root of one minus 0 0.32 squared, and n is five minus two, and when we calculate our test statistic, we find it is 0, 0,585. And we can then go and make a decision. So we go to the chi-square test. So they will give you the critical values if they, because you don't have a table. Um, otherwise they will give you a p-value and we can always use a p-value. So. Using the degrees of freedom and your alpha value, you go and find the critical value. But in your case, you don't have to go and find the critical value because you don't have a table. They will give it to you. 
and you create your region of rejections because it's two sided. It's a non directional test because we we can notice from the alternative hypothesis. It is a non directional test. So therefore there are two regions of rejection and we look at our critical value. It's 3,1824. So if you go to the T table, you will find with the degrees of freedom of three and your critical value, uh, your alpha value of 0, 0,025 because it's two side. We divide alpha by by two and our critical value is minus 3,18. And then we take our test statistic. We check if it falls in the rejection area or it will fall in the do not reject area. And we can see that 0, 0,585 it falls in a rejection area. Therefore, we do reject the null hypothesis. We reject the null hypothesis and we claim that there is no sufficient evidence of linear association at the 5% level of significance. Oh, we do not reject because zero. Oh, my arrow is pointing on the wrong side. It should point here. We do not reject the null hypothesis because 0, 0.58 is less than 3 point. It doesn't fall on sorry, this arrow. Yeah, it's pointing at the wrong point. It falls in the do not reject area. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. And we can claim that there is no sufficient evidence of linear because we said there is no relationship if we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. And that's how you will answer some of the questions. They just they will just need to know if you're rejecting the null hypothesis, how do you conclude? So let's look at exercises in terms of your questions from your past exam paper to see how the questions are framed. You just need to know your how to state the null hypothesis. Let's go back to those statement. You, you just need to know how to state the null hypothesis. What kind of a statement do you make when you state your null hypothesis? You need to know how to interpret your coefficient of correlation and so on. You will notice you will see when we look at exercises and activities that sometimes they will not even ask you to do any calculation. So let's go there. So the first exercise. A group of hospitalized patients who have been diagnosed as suffering from dementia are treated with certain drug over a period of time. These drugs were prescribed to improve their mental alertness. A researcher studies a random sample of 30 this a sample of 30 these patients who have been on this drug who have been on these drugs for varying amount of time hoping to establish a relationship between the number of days of a drug treatment and the patient score on a mental alertness test which is the correct formal way to express the appropriate null hypothesis is it number one, number two, or number three? How do we state the null hypothesis? Number one. It will be number one. Yes. Same question, right? Same, same question. Nothing has changed. Which is an appropriate test to determine the significance of the relationship between the number of drugs that the number of days that the drug was administered and the score on the mental alertness test obtained by the sample patients. What will be the appropriate test? Is it going to be a chi-square test? Is it going to be a Pearson product moment correlation? or is it going to be a t-test for one sample? Number two. Will be number two. Now, I want to go back to the statement. The previous weeks, 
we were talking about uh, a test to test the difference. Now, let's assume in the exam, you have question one, question two, question three. They all give you almost, ex almost similar statement. How will you identify that this one is talking to the relationship or you need to be looking at correlation? So the only thing that is different between what we do in this week and what we did the previous week, previous week it was more about are there any differences? You can see here they don't talk about differences, but they talk about relationship. So the previous one would have said establish if there are differences between X and Y with coefficient of correlations or correlation or hypothesis test for correlations, they always talk about relationship. Next week, we're also going to look at the other one where it talks about the relationship. The difference also between what we're doing this week and what we will be doing next week is that this week we're talking about numerical values. Number of days, test. All of them are numerical values. Next week, we will be talking about categorical values. So it's not going to be the actual numerical value or values that you are able to count or measure. It will be values that you can put into categories. So you should be able to know the differences when you're looking at the, at the questions. So we're moving on to the next exercise. Oh, this is for next week. This is for next week. Don't worry about this. I don't know how it came into this because it talks about the contingency table. Remember the today's this week, if it talks about contingency table, it's not what numerical value uh, correlation about. It still talks to the relationship, but it's not the one that we're looking for. Hmm. Okay. The other thing that I forgot to mention when we were explaining the correlation coefficient is that your R value takes any value between the value of minus one and one. It takes any value between that. So it can be negative one and one. It cannot be negative two or negative three. It cannot be, but it can be negative 0, 0,8 or it can be 0, 0,8 or negative 0, 0,35 and so on and so on. As long as the value is between negative one and one. So, this question, it looks tricky, right? It says, which of the following can take on a value of a negative 0 0.5? Is it one, a probability? Two, level of significance. Remember, level of significance is alpha. R, uh, three is coefficient of correlation, which is R. And four, which is the variance. I'm going to use the probability as PX. So which one can take a value of negative? Always remember that uh, your level of significance is always positive. Your variance will always be positive because you're taking the square root and you're summing up, you take in the square of the values. So it will always remain positive and this will always be positive and this will always be positive because the probability, remember probabilities are always between the values of zero and one. So they cannot be more less than that or more than that. They are always between zero and one. So looking at what I've just explained right now, it leaves us with only one. 
right? Which is option number three. Three. So that will be the value. If there is no relationship at all between two variable X and Y, what would be the most likely value of your Pearson correlation between uh, coefficient of correlation R out of the following? No relationship. Do you still remember? What will be the value of R? Number three. R will be equals to zero, which is number three. So the 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 questions in the in the exam will be like you will be sailing through because it seems as if it, you just need to know the basic concepts of correlation and that's it. Because I haven't seen way any way where we calculate something as well. So I don't think they will ask you to calculate. Okay, so this one looks a little bit different. A researcher suspects that children's level of anxiety during a test will interfere with their memories. He gives a list of items to be memorized to a sample of children and gives them a test to see how many items they can remember. Directly after, he also tests the level of anxiety of each child with an anxiety scale where a higher score shows a greater level of anxiety. The researcher draws a scatter plot of the relationship between the level of anxiety and the number of items recalled. The results are presented on the scatter plot below where our x variables, which is our independent variables, are your level of anxiety and your y variable, which is your, in the, your dependent variable, is the number of items they can record. Now, looking at this graph alone, you can already make up your mind because what you're looking at, when the level of anxiety increases, as it goes up, what happens to the number of items? they are going down because when the level of anxiety is low, the higher the number of items they can record. When the level of anxiety is high, the lower the number of items they can record. You need to be able to make, to, to, uh, to make uh, interpretation based on the thing that you are visualizing before you even go to the question to answer the question. So let's see what the question is asking us. What can the researcher infer about the relationship between the level of anxiety and the number of items remembered from the graph presented above? Now, how do we interpret the graph that is above? There is, <clears throat> number one, it says there is a negative relationship as the anxiety rises, less items are remembered. Number two, it's a positive relationship. As anxiety falls less, uh, items that are, uh, oh, as anxiety falls less, items are remembered. Number three, there is a negative relationship, less item remembered as anxiety falls. Number four, no actual relationship, the graph shows a negative trend over time. Is it one, two, three, or four? Number one. It will be number one. It is a negative relationship. When the level of anxiety increases, the fewer items or less items they are remembering. So the answer will be number one. I think today we'll finish early. We'll, we'll, we'll be done by an hour, by the rate that we're going. Exercise seven is the same information. I'm not going to read again the, the data, but now 
looking at the same information, suppose the researcher uses the data collected or calculated, uh, uses the data to calculate the Pearson product moment correlation R coefficient to determine the size of the relationship between the number of items remembered and the level of anxiety. Which of the following would be most probable as a description of R? Which of the following description of the expected value of R seems to be the most appropriate? So looking at this, are we able to say R is equal to zero? Therefore, it means there is no relationship. Are we saying R is greater than zero? Therefore, it means there is a positive relationship. Or are we saying R is less than zero? Therefore, it means there is a negative relationship. Or are we saying R is not equal to zero? We say R is not um, equals to zero. There is nothing like that that we calculate. It's either it's zero or any other number between minus one and one. Looking at this graph, which statement? Number three will be number three because number three it says less so when you see the sign that it looks like this always think of the values that goes to the left remember if i'm starting here at zero any value that goes to the left will be negative any value that goes to the right will be positive right so when it's greater than, it means it's positive. When it's less than, it means it's negative. So this will represent negative value. Okay, moving on to exercise eight. Now, here is, I said to you that you don't, you are expected not to, what did I say? not to do any calculations, right? And they give you a table and they ask you to find which one will be the closest. So now let's see if you really need to do any calculations. Which of the following values given below is the closest to the probable value of, uh, of Pearson product moment correlation coefficient for the value of X and Y? Now. All what you need to do is let's look at these values. It says if the value of X is one, the value of Y is eight. So I'm going to put it there because I don't want to go and do some calculation. Because this says it's a perfect because this is minus 1.0 and this is 1.0 and this is zero, right? So I can just create a scatter plot of this. It says when it's two, it's seven. When it is three, is six. So it goes down if I can write. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can just do it like that. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, just like that. I'm just making an illustration X and Y. So we say when it is, let's start again because I created new values. When it's one, it's eight, so it will be there. When it's two, seven, then it will be there. When it's three, six, then it will be there. I, I scale is not two points, so that is why hence I am struggling to write the right uh, thing in my book. When it's four, is five. Uh, when it's four, it's five. So it will be somewhere here. When is five, is four. It will be somewhere there. When it's six, is three. It will be somewhere there. 
when is seven is two it will be somewhere there when it's eight is one it will be somewhere there looking at this now would you say this is positive or negative relationship negative it's a negative relationship and looking at the dots are they perfect yes so therefore if they are perfect remember when it's perfect therefore it means your r will be either positive or your r will be negative one so which one will that be number one it will be number one so you don't even have to go and calculate anything or try and do anything you just need to know how to visualize the values the other thing you can do as well is look at your values you can see there it says one two three four five six seven eight and in reverse eight seven six so it means when one is going up the other one is going down right when the values of x are going up the values of y are just going down and you can just determine that when something is going up and the other one is going down your r will be equals to a negative something and if they line in a perfect straight line then it will be equals to one if it's not then you can find if they were scattered all over then you would have selected zero but at the moment they are all aligned or lined in a perfect straight line so that's how you will answer some of these questions okay so let's go to question number nine a researcher hypothesized that the drug treatment for the hospital schizophrenic patients improves their mental alertness the study oh he studies a random sample of 27 patients to see whether there is a relationship between the number of days of drug trade treatment and patient scores on their mental alertness, which is an appropriate null hypothesis for this research. There's always one way of stating the null hypothesis, regardless of which questions or what statement, especially for the correlation. Is it one, two, three, or four? Number four. It will be number four. We always use fee. Fee. Number 10. Which one or oh, oh, which of the following is suitable for representing the ages versus the height of a group of children? Age is numeric, height is numeric. So which one? Do we use a scatter plot? Do we use a contingency table? Or do we use a histogram? Number one. It will be number one, a scatter plot. So when you have two numerical values, always remember two numerical values then you use scatter plot one numerical value then you use a histogram two categorical values then we use a contingency table and that is what we're going to learn next week okay Exercise 11, which of the graphs below is most likely to represent a Pearson correlation of R equals to positive 0 0.85 between variable X and Y if, measure, if measurements are plotted on a scatter plot? Which graph? A, B, C. 
for a positive 0 0.85. Graph A. It will be graph A. So because graph A is positive, there is a clearly a positive strong relationship and this is a negative strong relationship and this is a weak I don't even know whether to say it's a weak relationship or whether there is no relationship because it looks like most of the values for y are, are constant. Um, so I can't even say it's a weak, negative or positive with this one. No. But I will why, say the, why don't we say... I would say there is no relationship yes. on this one. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we almost almost at the end. A negative correlation between X and Y implies that a person scoring low on X will generally score on Y. What is a negative one. relationship? It will be one on Y. Yeah. Ah, sorry, wait. <laughs> it says a negative correlation between X and Y implies that scoring low on X will generally. Here is your X scoring low on X will generally mean for a negative you relationship high. it will be you will score high because your point will be there and if you score low your point will be somewhere there and then it will be just oh, like that that's the positive correlation sorry yes yes so this will be low and high and if it was positive, it would have been low and, and low. And low. low. Always yes. visualize. If you are not sure about certain things, sometimes just draw for yourself how the scatter plot would look. You, you can just do, do a, something like this and then something like this to say this is negative, this is positive. So if I'm here at low and here at low, then it's a positive relationship. If I'm here at low and here at high. So find alternative ways to remember how, how to interpret certain things. Okay. Okay. Question 13. I did explain this sometime and I wrote somewhere on one of the slides at the top right here. And I said R lies between certain values. So I hope you still remember that. Pearson correlation coefficient can take values ranging between 3 which is it can take ranges between minus one and one and probability this is for the probability uh this is for for r i'm just gonna write the r and this is i don't know what that is i don't know any value that can be between that and that Maybe probably your alpha. Yes, alpha can be like values, but for alpha value, we don't actually even restrict it to only 10. It can even go to 20 or something like that. Because for a 80%, it will be 20 and so on. Okay. I thought we almost done. So I have a lot of questions from your past exam papers. 
Okay, let's look at another one. Pearson R represents, so now you need to be able to know how to interpret your Pearson R how to interpret your coefficient of correlation. Number one, does it represent a comparison between observed frequencies and expected frequencies if the null hypothesis is true for the distribution of the data across the variable? Number two, does it represent the relationship between two variables when the way in which they vary together is compared to their individual variances. Number three, the difference score between two variables rela relative to their pooled standard deviation. Your keyword, difference, relationship, and in terms of the first one, I'm going to highlight the two values. Is it one, two, or three? Number two. Six. It will be number two. Number three is something that we, deal, we dealt with last, uh, last week. Remember, for the pooled variance, where we looked at testing for two independent groups and number one we're going to deal with it next week which form part of the chi-square test for contingency tables to test the relationship between categorical variables so relationship okay. Question exercise 15. What is the coefficient or what is the correlation coefficient between the following X and Y values? Also, you can do the same. You can just say uh, because on this one it has a negative value. I'm just going to right here in the middle zero and here minus one. Oh no, really? Let's assume that this is a Cartesian plane that looks like this. At the middle here, there is what we call a zero on the X axis, on the Y axis. Any value this side is negative, any value this side is positive. Now, based on the information that you see in front of you, it says what will be the coefficient of correlation for this? If your x is zero, so it means x is right on top of the line, y is minus one, so the dot will be here. The next one, it says where x is zero, which is right on top of the line, your y is also zero, which will be right on top of the line. So you've got already two points. The next one, it says when x is zero, so I know that on this line, x is zero, and y is positive one. So let's assume that positive one is this, so that will be the dot. If I'm looking at this relationship like this, what is my r? Zero. R will be equals to zero, which is option number two. So you see, you don't even need to go and do some calculations that I showed you to say, uh, go and calculate your sum of X and Y, calculate your sum of X, your sum of X squared, so that you can substitute into the formula and calculate. You see, you don't even have to worry about that. All you need to do is use the scatter plot to find your answers. Okay, okay uh, uh, Miss Elizabeth, can mm. you just go back to exercise uh, that one? Can you please explain to me why are we saying it's zero? I'm trying to 
understand exactly why are we saying it's zero? What makes it to be zero? It's, it's the dot, the, the middle one that makes it ah. to be zero on the straight line. Okay, sorry. I see that we've got company. Hey, because we joined late. <laughs> we already had explained what does zero mean and all that. Let me go back so that then we can okay. be on the same on the same page with everyone. Thank you. I don't think I, I ever even, no, I don't have. So looking at a typical scatter plot, these are what we call scatter plot, visualizing two numerical values. If the line, if the dots are, are lined, perfectly on a straight line, like the way you see them, uh, your R can be equals to, it doesn't have to be equals to one, but in terms of um, the purpose of explaining the value of your R, I'm going to say if the, the dots are lying, they're like in a straight line going up, it means it's positive. Therefore, your R will be equals to one for a perfect relationship. Perfect positive relationship. If your dots are scattered all over the place, they can be what we call a weak relationship or they can be what we call a no relationship. When R is 0, 0,18, we say it's a weak relationship. If R was zero, we say there is no relationship. The same similar to when you you have your scatter plot where you have all the values scattered all over your r is equal to 0 0.85 we say it is a strong positive relationship uh, because the dots are going up when x is going up y is going up if you look at the bottom one the dots are also scattered almost everywhere but at least they form a straight line but you can clearly also see that when X is going up, R is going down. Oh, sorry, Y is going down. So these are values are going down when X is going up. And when you calculate R, you might find that it is minus 0, 0,92. And that we can say it is a negative relationship. And R takes a value between 0, uh, one and negative one or negative one and one, which we call the perfect relationship. As the value come closer to one, we say they've got a, a relationship. Now, the other way also of interpreting your correlation is based on the scale. Not only exactly like this, because if it's 0 0.69, you will say it's a moderate relationship whether it's negative or positive, because it can take a value of negative or a positive. Uh, if it's zero, it means there is no relationship. Therefore, it means the dots are scattered all over. They, you cannot tell whether when X is increasing, Y is increasing or it's decreasing. You cannot tell because the dots are just uh, lying all over the place, right? Or alternatively, you can have a scenario where it might look like this. Even though your values of X, you might have your dots looking like this. It's not a perfect relationship because when the value of X are increasing, the value of Y are staying constant, right? So there is nothing there. So your R here will be equals to zero. Or alternatively, you can have some way where it looks like this. It is still perfect, but when your X, or when your X is constant, let's say this is two, and your value of your Y, so this is your X, your Y, as it increase or decrease, the value of X stays the same. So the hence that will be equals to zero. So there will be no relationship between X and Y because X is constant or Y is constant in a way. And that is what is happening with 
that one. So we can go to another exercise uh, that Thank we you. just did, this one. So on this one, you can see when the value of X are increasing, the value of Y, they are decreasing. Sorry. When the value is, the value of Y are decreasing. And we, we did the scatter plot just to demonstrate. And we find that because it's perfect, they line up straight in a linear fashion. Therefore, your R will be a negative one because it's a perfect relationship. Now, on this one, let's go back there. And we also did some exercise here where we looked at whether it's a negative relationship or a positive relationship. But when it comes to X and Y value on a scatter plot, because right here it's zero, you can see that it's constant for the value of X is constant, but the value of Y is either going up or down. Therefore, your, there is no relationship here. So we cannot say it's negative one or positive one because there is no relationship. And when there is no relationship, remember how you interpret the values because then it means your R is equals to zero in that manner. And our last question of the day, Pearson correlation coefficient R represents, is it one, the size of the relationship between two variables? Two, is it the shape of the relationship between two variables? Or three, is it both? Does it represent the size and shape? I know in the beginning I said, uh, what did I say? I said R represent strength and direction. Now let's think about it. If I have this and I say R is positive, just going to add a few more so that I don't get. So if I look at this, your R, what does it represent in terms of this? Does it represent the shape? What does the shape mean? I don't know even what, what this um, does. Does the strength talk to the shape or does the size talk to the, the, the shape or the strength? Or because they can both. Yeah, it's a tricky one. <clears throat> I would think it's probably both. I will also think that because if I look at some of the questions, there was some way where they asked about the shape when we were just going to go back again to see if we have any question where it spoke about the shape. Mm -hmm. There is no relationship. There is no way we spoke about the shape. This was which one of the closest probable? Was no way. So for this one, I'm gonna assume that it, it both it's 
both of the above because this will tell me the, the size in terms of how big is it, 0 0.98. And the shape will be, is it scattered everywhere? Is it lean? Yeah. Is it um, a negative relationship? Does it go towards the negative or is it, is it constant? Where there is no relationship, or it's scattered everywhere, or is scattered like that, which will tell me about the shape of this correlation. But which also doesn't say much because then I'm going to assume that the shape talks to the direction, which is either negative or positive or no relationship. And the size will talk to the strength, which is always determined by a numerical value of 0, 0,98. So this is the shape, and this is the size. If I'm I'm reading this question the way they they phrase it, yeah. Therefore, it means it's both of them. Uh, Miss. Miss Elizabeth, if I may say something, yes, I also may. agree with you. It's I also agree with you that it's number three because mm. when you look here, it says if dots form, if if dots ne, they form a U or S shape number one, then mm. correlation coefficient is not relevant. So it mm. means that also we deal with shapes. Yeah when it comes to uh, this plotting of the graphs, you understand? Yes. So that's how I understand it. So it is true, it, 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 we deal, it, it deals with size and shape also. Yeah. I get it. So it is number three. And are there any questions? Because that's the end of our Exercises. If there are no questions, then it means we're going to leave early. So I'm just going to put the register back onto the chat. Please make sure that. Those who joined late, you just complete the register before you leave. And remember that next week is our last session until further notice. Um, then we can start looking at exam preparations. Um, therefore, it means I will need to know when you are writing your exam so that we can plan for that. And the exam is on the 8th of November. Yo, ah, that will be long before your 8th of November. Then it means the whole of October, you are on your own. Um, but we can we can arrange in terms of sessions to look at how we look at the exam preparation uh, by looking at different exam papers, going through them from question one up until the end, covering everything so that then you are prepared um, come the eighth of November because I am going to assume that. UNISA is going to stop the sessions, especially the the group sessions, uh, very soon, as soon as the exam starts, because the exam starts in October, and my last session is on the 27th. But that doesn't stop us from engaging, whether UNISA stops the sessions and say we no longer offer the sessions so we can still continue uh, with our uh, our sessions 
but we can arrange for that. So I'm going to assume that everyone who's here is also on the WhatsApp group. Um, if I know more information, then I will share there. But other than that, then I will see you next week. Same time, which is six o'clock until half past seven. Thank you very much. This is very helpful. I really appreciate it. You are more than welcome. It's my pleasure. Are there any questions? If there are none, then happy learning. Enjoy your evening. I will see you next week. Bye.